The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Uh, well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Lovely to have you uh, with us here today. Um, and uh, great to be uh, seeing all of you. How's the volume, uh, folks? Can you hear me all right? Will somebody just type in the question box? Uh, let me know if you can hear me. Hank's the first guy up. He's down in Hunter Valley. He's a, he's a farmer. He's an early starter. Good on you, mate. Uh, Alan, uh, Ford Lauderdale. Uh, yes, you can hear me too. Andrew, you too. Uh, Dave and uh, and Chase, uh, my uh, anti-smoking campaigner. Uh, good, good to have you all here. And uh, Adrian down in Adelaide. Uh, great to have you, folks. Okay, let's... Uh, uh, let's see what's happening here. Uh, uh, we are, yep, we're running. We're all right. You can see the screen. You can hear me. There are the good parts of things. Uh, let's see who we got today. Big meeting today, folks. A lot of things to talk about. Um, uh, good roll up, too. Uh, uh, thanks for being with us, Adrian, down in Adelaide. Akshay is a, uh, in India. Uh, he's a real smart trader. He's done a lot of work with the Daniel Code. Alan down in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, I had a long talk to Alan yesterday, uh, and um, he uh, raised the question. He said he's a, he's a bit of an um, internet whiz. Um, and he said, you know, do you want to, uh, uh, are you trying to grow the business organically, or would you would you like to promote it? Well, of course, um, we've never really promoted the business. We've never advertised. Uh, but uh, the simple answer is yes, of course, we want to grow the business. <coughs> and... Uh, uh, excuse me, if you've got some friends, <coughs> send them along. Um, it's often occurred to me that uh, of all the needs and wants and uh, uh, fancy words about lifestyle and what have you, there seems to me to be a common denominator for almost everyone in the world. If you, if you ask them uh, what they want more of, the answer is money. Um, and um, I, I think sometimes we make all this trading business far too confusing. Uh, but the business of trading futures and forex is actually not about being right. The business of trading is about making money, uh, and that's how we measure ourselves. The more money we make, the better we think our trading is. Uh, so uh, if you or your friends, uh, Joel from Vero Beach, hello, mate. Uh, I'll get back to you about uh, uranium. I had a look at it. Um, uh, there's nothing I found, uh, Joel, that's uh, uh, terribly proprietary or would really be more helpful to you than what's on the web anyway. Um, uh, but I'll uh, I'll keep an eye on it. Uh, but um, uh, the the simple proposition is that uh, the business of trading is making money. So um, if you or your friends want to make some more money, uh, try to get them interested in trading um, and. Uh, at the Daniel Code, we have something for everyone from very basic stuff up to uh, a uh, private tutorial, which is uh, the uh, absolute upshot to make you an elite trader. Uh, let's move on. Alvin, Alan, Albert, uh, I spoke to Albert yesterday. He's uh, a gold bug and, uh, in Canada, and I think he's going to be a day trader from our conversation. But uh, good to hear from you, uh, Albert, as well, uh, Andrew. Uh, Anthony D, good to hear from you. It's been a long time, mate. Bill, uh, Bill, uh, Gray Bill, the same. Uh, Chase is with us. Uh, Sim is with us. Uh, and uh, Hung is with us. Uh, Chun, I should say, uh, both up in Malaysia. Uh, both uh, going to be very good traders and um, uh, uh, interesting, uh, interesting people. Um, they're both doing tutorials with me at the moment. Um, and... Um, I'm sure Sim's got a few headaches doing his paper trading of natural gas, Sim, but keep at it, mate. Uh, good on you, Daryl, over in uh, Mossman. I think he's moved. I think he sent me a text saying you're on the northern beaches now. Daryl, I hope you're well. Uh, Dave, good to have you with us, uh, all the Daves. Um, Dave S. Dave. Oh, and Fiona, we've got a new lady with us. I always uh, like to say hello, particularly to the ladies, because we don't have many and we should have more. Uh, Fiona, uh, welcome. Uh, great to have you with us. Graham over in New Zealand. He's a, a long-time Daniel Code bloke. Hank, of course, down in uh, the Hunter Valley, uh, has become a grandfather. His son, Justin, uh, and his wife have had a baby. Harold, the gold bug, king of the gold bugs in Redding, California. Lovely guy. He looked after us so well when I was over there many years ago now, isn't it? Uh, Howard uh, is over in uh, New Zealand, just done a... Uh, uh, tutorial um, and um, uh, great to have him with us too. Uh, Jayath, Jeff, 
Mm, Jen, good to have you with us, Jen, Joel, I uh, mentioned. Uh, John, uh, Keith, I uh, talked to Keith during the week, great to have you with us. Mark, you too, uh, <coughs> spoken about you, Mark's a tutorial guy. Um, as is Mike, as is Norbert, uh, Peter uh, King is a uh, very, very good uh, short-term trader, intraday trader. Uh, more Peters, uh, Richard, Rolf, yeah, Rolf, haven't seen you for a while, good to have you with us. Uh, Scott, uh, welcome. Uh, Tom Tom, the uh, wealth fund manager from Florida. Hope you're well. Hope your buddy's recovered. He was very, very sick, wasn't he, from the uh, uh, very sick from the um, uh, rotten uh, COVID-19, him and his wife. Uh, but I uh, hope he's uh, uh, on the road to recovery. Toddy uh, over in uh, South California. Haven't heard from you for a while. He's a top... Uh, uh, Daniel Code guided tutorials, what have you, and uh, Trevor. So lots of people. Uh, great to have you all with us, folks. Anyway, let's move on. The world is uh, waiting, um, and there's just um, a whole lot to do. So um, markets are uh, rational, uh, orderly, and sometimes predictable, as you know. Um, and uh, the Daniel Code to set a proprietary ratio that control time and price in all markets. So uh, equities are confused. Interesting. We're going to talk about equities, commodities, and forex today. We're going to have a big, uh, a big deep dive into lots of these markets. Um, equities basically are uh, trying to solve the problem, aren't they? They, uh, whether the uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, virus is going to be a, a long-term issue. Uh, or whether uh, you can take the view that uh, the worst fits over and uh, onwards and upwards. And it's very interesting how the markets have divided themselves on that point. We'll have a look at that as we go. Um, and clearly the risks are, to each individual market are different. Um, you'll see when we get there, NASDAQ has almost regained its highs. Uh, just been a fantastic, fantastic rally. Um, and uh, very close to closing above the DC black line, which implies new highs, new all-time highs. Absolutely extraordinary. Um, and, of course, they're the uh, high-tech disruptive um, businesses, uh, which have done so well, but the market's view of them is uh, uh, they're going to do just as well. Um, and uh, <coughs> the rest of the markets <coughs> are not quite so sanguine about it all. <coughs> so... Um, Interesting to see uh, what's going to happen uh, with the presidential election uh, coming on soon. Uh, that's November, so uh, pretty soon that must start having an effect on markets. So, and uh, it'll be interesting, of course, you know, Trump's been a, just been a great booster for equity markets. Uh, that's his caper. He's very, very good at it. Um, and uh, uh, we'll see as the results pose out. At the moment, most of the polls have got Biden well ahead. Um, uh, I would I would be very surprised if Biden can stand up to Trump on the stump when they get going. Uh, but uh, uh, maybe people are just weary of uh, Trump. Uh, let's have a look at the first of these markets. This is the Nasdaq. Um, uh, unbelievable, isn't it? Have a look at it. Uh, the uh, black line at uh, ninety-four eighteen. These are all futures contracts, incidentally, unless I tell you otherwise. Uh, ninety-four eighteen um, is the Daniel Code black line. That's the last level of support or resistance uh, for any swing. And of course, this is uh, measuring the major swing there. Um, and we've got to close above that black line. Um, I'm not uh, sure. This is a. Uh, uh, we, yeah, we certainly got to close these are daily bars. So that implies um, that the uh, old swing high will be taken out. Um, so uh, NASDAQ is just in the most bullish of positions uh, that you could imagine. Have a look at this. This is the Dow. Um, it's finding uh, resistance at the 59% uh, retracement. Uh, so, you know, it's really in no man's land there. It's... Uh, it's not sure whether the future is good or bad. It's uh, being terribly sensible and just sort of sitting around the place, uh, which seems to me the logical thing to do. Um, have to look at the S&P futures. Um, they've just uh, uh, got through the 62.5% uh, retracement. So uh, S&P 500, they're slightly more bullish than, uh, than the Dow, aren't they? Uh, which is interesting. Um, here's the Russell. Russell's um, struggling 
uh, has been struggling at the 50% retracement. So, uh, the Russell is the small caps um, index. So they're the uh, small caps stocks make up that uh, uh, that uh, particular market. So it's it's weaker. Um, it's been consistently weaker for uh, quite a while, but this uh, rally is starting to find it out a bit. Uh, here's Germany's DAX. Uh, I know um, a lot of you in Europe uh, trade this, um, and um, you know it's sort of uh, right up there. It's well above the 50% retracement. It's uh, uh, it's finding uh, some resistance at the 59% uh, retracement. Uh, but I mean, I find these I find these recoveries extraordinary. Um, uh, you know, um, don't ever ask me what market's going to do because, from a trading point of view, I'm the first to say uh, we don't know what the markets will do tomorrow. We never know what the markets will do tomorrow. Uh, but I would have thought. Uh, on a personal basis, there's just a whole lot more trouble uh, to come out of uh, this COVID-19 uh, disaster. Uh, and, uh, of course, Americans are known for their unbridled optimism, and uh, uh, certainly the NASDAQ uh, is reflecting that. Have a look at this um, as a variant. This is the Australian share price index. Now, uh, it's struggling um, at the 44% retracement. It's weaker than uh, any of those uh, US markets. <coughs> Yet <coughs> Australia has had uh, the very best of um, uh, the very best of uh, managing the uh, COVID-19 virus. Uh, Australia and New Zealand are both extremely fortunate because they're islands. Um, Australia is a very very large island, but it is an island, and. Um, uh, as soon as the powers that be um, uh, woke up to the idea of closing the ports and closing the airports and the uh, shipping ports uh, to uh, passengers, um, we started to get a grip on this. And In fact, Australia's had 100 deaths uh, out of a population of about 25 million. New Zealand's done pro rata just as well, maybe even a touch better, uh, but uh, marvellous. And the uh, states have uh, uh, gone a little bit their own way. The two most popular states, Queensland, I should say, I'm sorry, um, New South Wales and Victoria, uh, which are the industrial industrial heartland of Australia, if you like. Um, they want everything open. They're uh, yelling and screaming that uh, business has got to come first, a bit, a bit like Trump's been saying. Um, and the rest of the states, uh, the state I live in, uh, Queensland, uh, the Northern Territory, West Australia, they're two massive, huge, big states, and South Australia, uh, and Tasmania, which itself is an island down off the... Uh, South, uh, south southerly coast of Australia, uh, the uh, premiers of those, that's the uh, governor, if you like, the Australian equivalent premier, uh, of uh, those states have kept them closed. Um, and uh, we've had the Queensland border closed now since uh, uh, early March. Um, and uh, it's working. No new cases. Um, uh, same in uh, New Zealand, same uh, pretty much everywhere. The the bulk of the infections um, in Australia and New Zealand, where you're talking about very small samples and control populations, uh, the bulk of these uh, COVID-19 infections have all come from um, overseas travellers in either getting off planes uh, or uh, cruise ships. We've had a total uh, disaster. I would say the vast majority of the Australian infections um, have come from uh, the passengers on the cruise ship Ruby Princess, uh, which uh, was doing a, a trip out of uh, Sydney uh, just to various ports in New Zealand. Um, so uh, it was considered a low risk and uh, the Department of Health uh, completely dropped the ball and uh, let everyone off the uh, uh, ship when it came back to Australia. Um, and um, uh, they went away, a large number of them were infected, and that, that's really caused the bulk of the infections uh, in Australia. It, it's been a total uh, failure of the bureaucratic apparatus. I mean, um, Sydney Department of Health in New South Wales saying not our fault, it's uh, Homeland Security, uh, which here is called uh, Customs and Borders, I think. Um, and anyway, we have a, a, a equivalent of Homeland Security supposed to monitor these things. Uh, total and utter failure. So now we have a Royal Commission before uh, um, a, um, a, a QC to uh, try and get to the bottom of who was supposed to be doing it. And what's come out so far is just total and utter incompetence. Um, and uh, uh, that, I guess, if you're sort of anti the bureaucrats, as I am constantly, uh, you say total incompetence. A fairer view might be. Um, 
uh, human error. Um, and there's always going to be human error. The problem is uh, with this uh, current pandemic, uh, some of these human endeavors, uh, errors, I should say, can be extremely uh, expensive. Um, and, uh, you know, the uh, Ruby Princess, a total and utter disaster. Uh, that's what happens. Okay. Um, I talked to you the last time uh, we met um, about uh, a system of uh, time stops on long-term uh, charts. And I'm specifically looking at um, equities on this. Um, this chart is... Um, uh, the S and P. This is a this is a three day chart. Each one of these bars is three trading days, um, and these are the um, two settings that uh, at this stage I'm suggesting. Uh, they look to me the best. Uh, for those of you who weren't with us at the previous uh, webinar, it's on the website. Uh, all these webinars are recorded, um, and uh, absent any uh, technical failings, they're posted um, usually within 24 hours of, uh, of them being. Uh, uh, finished. So um, we looked at um, various um, settings uh, for the three-day uh, charts and the six-day charts. And what was really interesting is that speeding up the settings uh, actually didn't make much change at all. Uh, we had three different settings to look at, uh, with a, covering a wide range of time cycles, and they made virtually no difference. Uh, so this is the three-day um, uh, chart. Uh, and you can see uh, since uh, 2016, uh, there have been four uh, uh, sell side triggers um, and one uh, buy side uh, trigger. Um, do uh, do let me uh, know your thoughts on this. It's pretty it's pretty obvious uh, that uh, folks who are invested in stocks um, uh, really really need some guidance as to when they should. Uh, be getting cautious or taking uh, better still take steps to actively uh, hedge their uh, portfolio, at least know what to do uh, to hedge the portfolio. Suasini, uh, who is not with us today, had a large um, uh, a large uh, investment uh, stock portfolio and she um, hedged it um, the way I've suggested uh, within uh, two days of the top. So she actually did uh, very, very well indeed. So. Uh, there you are. So um, this is looking at the same thing on a nine-day um, indicator. Uh, so we, we push this out in time considerably. Um, and as you can see, it doesn't make much difference. Uh, this uh, particular chart goes way back to 2010. Uh, and you've got one, two, three. You've got four uh, sell side rules triggered. Um, and the buy side rule is just about to be triggered. So um, all of these uh, types of uh, indicators have the same problem that uh, if you uh, reach an acceptable level of risk one side, do you want to maintain the same risk the other side? In other words, uh, as it's turned out, was it worth uh, hedging your uh, stocks and shares? Because uh, they've gone back uh, to uh, pretty much the sort of place at which you would be hedging them. Uh, and that's that's a separate conversation that you should be having. But you should be having that conversation and making having it clear in your mind, if you do own stocks and shares, losing money on your stocks and shares investments is entirely voluntary. Um, if you are of a, of a mind to say, I'm not going to hedge my portfolio, I'm not going to take any protection for the portfolio, um, I don't know how to do it and I don't want to ask someone how to do it, then if you have losses, they're your own. You had those losses because you were just blind to the opportunities of being able to hedge your um, investment. Um, and you can hedge them, and it's very simple how to do it. Uh, but do please, those of you who have investments in, in stocks and shares, and I know most of you do because of the, um, the tax offerings, the tax, op the tax uh, incentives, I should say, uh, are just so great. So um, think about that, um, and um, <coughs> we'll probably start uh, publishing this uh, um, type of uh, long-term trend indicator, uh, and we would uh, have to do it for the Dow, S&P, Russell, DAX, uh, NASDAQ, uh, because the settings, the results are so different. Um, I mean, I, I'm amazed, I'm sure you will be too, um, how strong the NASDAQ is in uh, 
it, it honestly, it's as, as if nothing ever happened. Nothing happened with COVID-19 uh, to affect the uh, value of the NASDAQ. Uh, and to me, intellectually, that's an extraordinary proposition. But that's what the market's telling us. And of course, the market's always right. Always right. Doesn't matter what I think, it's what the market thinks. And the market thinks that uh, the major NASDAQ companies are uh, uh, onward and upward. They're not uh, uh, going to be affected by this. Uh, has no consequences for them. And, um, that's a pretty extraordinary pr proposition, but that's what the NASDAQ's telling you. Um, let's move on. I wanted today to make sure we spent some time talking about uh, Forex. Uh, we actually started off as predominantly a Forex website, um, and uh, we've sort of morphed across now to be, uh, I'd, li I'd like to say, balanced. We, we cover about the same number of uh, uh, futures markets uh, as we cover on uh, the NASDAQ, uh, we cover on the Forex market. <laughs> uh, but uh, in the uh, webinars, I'm always seem to be talking more about futures than uh, Forex because uh, I guess they've been more uh, uh, more exciting. But this stuff is pretty exciting. Those of you who uh, are with us constantly or follow the Daniel Code, you remember at the beginning of each year, I give you a little um, guesstimate of what I think are going to be the uh, good trades for the year and the first one I have nominated for um, uh, pretty well in the last uh, two and a half, three years um, uh, or maybe even more is uh, weakness in the Aussie dollar. It's been ridiculously overvalued. If you have a look at those highs uh, back in 2010-11, that's the Aussie dollar at 108 US. I mean it's just the total proposition was absurd. It's always been absurd. Australia is a net borrower of capital. Uh, we don't create enough uh, money to uh, uh, to uh, cover all the um, expenses, development uh, costs. It's a developing country, of course, but Australia is a huge net importer of capital. So uh, how it could ever have got to the stage of being worth a dollar oh eight US, I simply do not know. But uh, you saw uh, the parts of this chart. I've cleaned off all the intermediate levels that have gone past, but uh, we had the black line at 54.64, um, and we uh, were thinking and, uh, in fact, hoping that might be something like a target, and it was. Uh, you can see that uh, in January, uh, the Aussie uh, really put in a serious effort um, to get down to 55 uh, cents or so. Uh, but uh, look what's happened since. Uh, this is the daily chart. Look at the rally. Um, this is the rally. Uh, and it's up testing um, uh, 66 from uh, down in the 55 range. Uh, been a massive rally. Uh, why would the Australian dollar rally? Um, is it because uh, business is good? Well, no, there's no business. COVID shut almost everything down. Uh, but the exports are still going on. Is the iron ore business with uh, mainly China good? Yes, very good. Uh, coal, uh, very good. India, uh, China, other places. Uh, that's the sort of thing that normally drives the Australian dollar. Uh, but uh, um, it's uh, showing signs of uh, froth and bubble and happiness. Uh, it's like all over. That's something we can forget. Let's move on up higher and higher. Um, I am of the view that it is uh, getting back into the area where it's overvalued now. But as I say, um, again, it doesn't matter what my view is. It matters what the market tells you. And the market is telling you that the daily trend of the Aussie dollar is up and roaring. Very, very strong. Um, so uh, that's uh, kind of interesting, isn't it? Um, this is uh, the Canadian dollar. We have a lot of Canadian clients. Um, and this is the uh, US dollar, Canadian dollar cross, or the loonie, as some of them uh, call it. Um, and um, uh, US dollar is just staying strong, isn't it? Um, that's the interesting uh, takeout from all of this. Uh, let's have a look at this. Um, this is the crude oil chart. And uh, uh, what I wanted to do today is I wanted to show you um, these Daniel Code charts. These are the Dan this is from the Daniel Code members charts. They're updated uh, twice a week. They're updated on the weekend uh, and on Wednesday night. <coughs> and this was the state of the charts at Wednesday night. Um, and um, uh, I often say, or all the time, in fact, that uh, these uh, Daniel Code time and price ratios. And what you're seeing here are the Daniel Code price ratios. These control all markets in all time frames. Now, 
you're going to see all the as at Wednesday night. Remember, there's been a day's trading since then, but this is the latest version of members' charts that come out, and they're posted on our charts. Um, here's the US dollar index. Look where it closed. Um, here's uh, the S&P E mini. It's going to start struggling underneath the 2981 blue line, uh, as it has. Uh, this is gold. Uh, gold's had a big high trend move down. Look where that turn came for the big outside bar. This bar here. Where did the turn come? Almost exactly at the Daniel Code black line. I mean, I want you to be looking at two things here. Uh, that uh, black line, incidentally, is uh, at 1775.3 uh, in gold. Uh, the high of that big uh, outside bar snapback reversal was 1775.8. In other words, uh, uh, five, uh, five ticks uh, variance, uh, not even the width of a, of a hair. Um, so I want you to be looking at two things as we run through these. First of all, the accuracy. Uh, of uh, how these markets, uh, these Daniel Code ratios, control all markets. Um, and uh, it, it, it's quite extraordinary to me. And the other thing that's extraordinary to me is um, how you can trade without these numbers. Because if we're talking about trading price, uh, the first condition we have to find is uh, target recognition by price at a very, very small uh, variance. Um, and uh, uh, if you don't have that in your trading and you're not aware of that or you don't have the Daniel Code numbers, honestly, you're giving away a huge opportunity. That's the, the, the biggest difference uh, of the Daniel Code to everything else um, is that um, before you can get a uh, sell signal in price, you have to have target recognition of the Daniel Code numbers. Um, and that uh, rules out uh, the vast, vast majority of orders. Um, here's the Germany stacks. Have a look at this. Um, 11.2075, it's uh, gone down um, a little bit uh, since then. We had a little inside bar today. Uh, but there you are. The, the close on Wednesday uh, is uh, 11.212, uh, uh, six points away. Amazing, isn't it? Uh, keep looking, uh, folks. There's more. Here's copper. See where it closed on Wednesday? Right on the DC red line number. Here's the Russell 2000. See where it was stopped on uh, Tuesday, caused the reversal, right at the black line number 1352.1. Uh, here's soybeans. Uh, that's, uh, you can see it's been struggling against the uh, resistance at uh, 848. We had a really good uh, success sell uh, in soybeans for today, which is not on this chart. I repeat, this was uh, the members' charts as at Wednesday night. Here's the sugar, uh, which has been an interesting performer. <coughs> Uh, look where look where this bar stops. I mean, these charts are uh, up here, uh, up on the members' website all the time. You can you don't have to take my word for any of this. Uh, you're most welcome to go uh, and have a look. And uh, uh, if you're really interested in this, do go to the Daniel Code website uh, and click on Chart Archive. You'll find over 30,000 of these uh, charts that I've uh, uh, drawn or completed <coughs> since uh, we went public. Uh, with the Daniel Code um, in uh, the end of uh, 2008. Um, and there's over 30,000 of uh, my charts in there. You'll be hard pressed to find a market that's turned anywhere except at the Daniel Code number. So uh, here's sugar. Uh, and today we've had a bit of a snapback reversal bar. The high, 11.32. Well, there's your red line, your blue lines, 11.31, 11.35. 11.32 is where the high of today's move was, right in that Daniel Code uh, resistance level, which uh, you won't see anywhere else uh, because the Daniel Code ratios um, are not any known, publicly known, generally known ratio. Uh, people who come to the Daniel Code, of course, learn what they are. Um, but um, uh, there we are. Here's silver. Uh, I'll show you silver a bit later on. The day before, this is a Wednesday's high, is not really uh, close enough to that blue line uh, to give us a blue line trade. But the previous day did, Tuesday did, um, and the, uh, the, the the number it triggered for its blue line trade uh, is, is off the chart because it's moved on. Um, but you'll see that we'll get to it uh, in a few moments. Um, here's uh, US T-bonds. Now, uh, that sell, the big uh, sell in T-bonds, we had a, uh, well, uh, 
pretty well everything you can think of a, a daily sell um, on uh, T bonds uh, for uh, Monday. So that big bar down, look where it stopped. The low of that bar is 178 carat 02. That little arrowhead figure is called a carat. 178.02. There's the black line, 178.02. I didn't just put that on. That's been on the chart for weeks and weeks. But that's exactly where it stopped. Stopped like it was shot, didn't it? Wonderful. Um, and uh, the rally uh, has gone on today. Uh, you see, this is, uh, this is Aussie USD, folks. Uh, let's turn our attention a little bit to Forex. Um, and this is uh, still... Wednesday's <coughs> members chart, <coughs> same story here. Uh, look at the blue line, uh, 65.97, uh, and uh, the close of that bar there, the uh, last bar you can see on that chart, the close, 65.97, against the death of code blue line at 65.97. Zero variance. Does that happen often? Yes, it does. Uh, we expect these variances to be a handful of ticks, really, most of the time, not more. Um, in fact, we only allow a variance of 0.1%. <clears throat> but in reality, um, uh, I'm expecting the target recognition to be within a handful of, trick, of ticks. Um, so that set up a, a probable reverse for Aussie USD. And, of course, we've had an inside bar uh, today, but it's uh, a down bar, as we would have expected. Um, here's Euro JPY. Uh, that, um, uh, where have we got him? Here he is. <clears throat> so I'm going to show you this chart in a lot more detail uh, very shortly. But you can see there's a black line up there. This was a Wednesday night. There was the Daniel Code black line at 118.528. Uh, so we've got a snapback reversal bar today. Uh, and uh, if you have a look at your chart, the high was 118.521, uh, like uh, seven ticks. Goodness me, incredible, isn't it? That's how accurate this stuff is. Uh, you can see why we got the rally. You can see from the uh, bar way down in uh, uh, May 2006, that's this fella here, um, uh, that uh, close of that bar, uh, 114568 against the blue line at 114544. Nothing. It's not even the width of a hair. And that's what turns the markets. All markets turn at the Daniel Code numbers. Uh, and they do. And I wanted you to see this a bit. We talk about it, but never. most of you never get to see this stuff. Uh, this is the British pound-Japanese yen uh, pair. Um, and uh, uh, it had a, a down day today, as you can expect. The high, uh, the recent high, which was on uh, Tuesday, uh, that high went to, it stopped at 132.504 um, against the blue line at uh, 132.530, uh, 26 uh, ticks in there. So a little inside bar down and followed through today with um, a lower bar. Let's move on. So um, New Zealand USD, uh, this is another one. Uh, there was the uh, black line again, uh, the famous... The famous black line, uh, we've got a, uh, a Dave, we've got a, a, a US trader who just loves the black lines. Uh, we should call him Mr. Black Lines. That high going into that black line was uh, 61.58 against 61.56. Two ticks different variance between the actual high and the Daniel Code black line. So uh, if you're getting the idea that none of this stuff is random, but markets move continually between the Daniel Code numbers, <coughs> then you're on to something <coughs> because um, that's what I've been proving uh, for the last, um, uh, well, 30 years I've been doing this stuff, but I've had the Daniel Code in one form or another, some part of it for probably over 20 years. Uh, but the uh, website's been uh, available to you since 2000, uh, late 2008. Uh, and uh, so there's uh, uh, 13, 14 years uh, and over 30,000 of these charts, as I say, in our chart archives, which you can, uh, anyone can uh, look at. I mean, have you ever known where markets are even likely to stop? Uh, I mean, target recognition is just the first part of uh, finding a high probability turn in price. 
but until you look at these charts, you probably don't even get the idea how accurate this stuff is. I mean, there is absolutely nothing random about the futures or Forex markets. Um, we've gone through all the futures markets we follow. We've gone through a good whack of the Forex markets we follow. Um, and uh, they're just whacking on these numbers all the time. Um, I told you um, I'd bring you back to this uh, Euro Japanese Yen market uh, updated now. This is uh, with today's trading in it. Um, and you recall <coughs> earlier we just didn't have today's trading, but there it is. It ran up to that black line, 118,528. Uh, and that is uh, your know, JPY. Uh, that uh, black line, uh, but the actual high. So this market went up in a very strong rally one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days. Roared up, uh, opened uh, near the previous day's close. This was today's price action. Roared up like it was going forever. Went to 118,521. 118,521 against the DC black line to 118,528. The black line is a very special Daniel Code line. It's the last level of support or resistance in any uh, swing. Uh, and uh, it hit that number and was like it just got shot, wasn't it? Stopped it in its tracks, down it went. Um, and uh, we've got a uh, nice key reversal bar from a Daniel Code number sitting there. Um, and uh, Presumably, or should I even say probably, or not even that. We'll see what happens tonight, but that uh, that has uh, demonstrated a uh, nice, nice trade for that $1,600 um, just for knowing, uh, putting on the uh, TO3 plus buy signal that we gave you. Uh, we had a sell signal for the day, hasn't been elected yet. Uh, might be tonight, we'll see. Uh, what a difference it makes if you know these numbers. Um, have a look at this one. Uh, this is Euro USD, TO3 plus buy signal, uh, uh, 1100 plus uh, dollars. Uh, same sort of target recognition, very small variance. Have a look at this little beauty here. This is the dollar Canadian or the loony, if you like. Uh, this has been a real choppy market. Um, it's been up and down and up and down, uh, but uh, it shows you that. Uh, uh, even in this market, which just I've just started this coverage for you or started putting on the signals we've had since April the 21st. Have a look at it. Sell signal right at the high. The high of that bar, the actual high of that bar, uh, was at 1.4265. Where's the Daniel Code blue line? 1.4264. Oh, really? One tick variance. Is that something to excite you. I mean, this is what happens all the time, every day at the Daniel Code. If you don't know this stuff, and we've got some very, very seasoned traders with us, some real experts who've come to us, uh, but if you don't know this stuff, markets will appear to you to be random, and they're not. Uh, random walk theory uh, got awarded a Nobel Prize uh, uh, and very simple to do that. The guys who wrote it knew nothing about futures markets. The guys who whack out, uh, hand out the Nobel Prize know nothing, nothing about futures markets. And in fact, if you look at the people who've been awarded the Nobel Prize over recent years, they know very little about anything. But they certainly know nothing about futures markets. But they got the Nobel Prize for supposedly proving markets are random. Random walk theory. What a, a total lot of bollocks. Have a look at this. What's random about that TO3 sell signal? Okay, there was the high. Uh, I'm going back to the first signal you can see there that I put on for you. There's the high, 1.4265. The Daniel Code blue line, 1.4264. <coughs> That's target recognition. <coughs> the other conditions were there to give us a TO3 sell. Down it went. Charge down. Went down to... Uh, April uh, the 30th um, and I've taken off the uh, line underneath it but you can see it's over at the right hand side uh, 1.3843 uh, that low uh, the actual low uh, 1.38507 uh, ticks that's all different that set up a TO3 plus buy signal off it went got two days up out of it $1,130, made 650 on the way down. And this is a period of nothing trading. This is a consolidation, folks. There's no big trend in here at all. This is a market that's been consolidating 
uh, continuously since uh, um, April the, uh, the 21st. Uh, so 650 down, 1100 going up. Uh, up it goes. Uh, get this nice big uh, up bar here, uh, which happens to be um, May the 6th. What's the high? 1.4157. What's the Daniel Code number? 1.4158. Really? Oh, yes. Really. Do we make this stuff up? No. Are the charts available for the, for, for the members to see all the time, every day? Go ahead. What do we do with... What do we do when they finish being the current week? They go get paid, posted in archives. The public can see that. You can see every chart we've used, every chart I've created since uh, uh, before December um, 2008. Extraordinary stuff. Look at that. Uh, and that, of course, sets up a sell signal. Doesn't go far. A couple of days down and reverse it. We made $200. Uh, that's $200 we didn't have before. Not bad. <clears throat> and it also then set up, I've taken off the early previous numbers because the charts moved on, uh, but the Friday, uh, May the 8th, with the low of that, uh, was right at a DC number, um, and that set up um, a TO3 buy signal. Uh, another weak little trade, 200 bucks up, uh, and uh, up into the big uh, bar of uh, May the 14th. Uh, this is it here. This is May the 14th here, folks, the black line. Uh, 1.4144, uh, the actual height there, 1.4141. Really? Three ticks there, variant? Yep, looks like a little gap there. It's three ticks, that's all. Width of a hair. Um, so, uh, nice sell signal, TO3 sell signal. Down it went. 452 bucks into the buy yesterday, elected today. So, we've been on every turn everywhere since uh, we always are but this is i hope um, has demonstrated to you uh, what's uh, possible in a market that's doing nothing very exciting uh, there's 600 750 950 uh, 1300 uh, 2500 uh, sitting there just uh, looking at your daniel code signals every day 2500 dollars uh, profit in a consolidating market Pretty extraordinary, isn't it? I think it is. Um, and <coughs> uh, lastly, of course, uh, the low on um, Tuesday uh, was uh, 13867. Uh, there's the blue line number 13861. Six ticks variance. Really? Yes, really. That's what these markets do when you're ma managing them with the Daniel Code. If you are not aware of these numbers in the Daniel Code, honestly, I don't know how you can trade. Uh, but... Um, the vast majority of the world seems to be managing uh, without us. But uh, anyway, if you want to, uh, really, the biggest single advantage you can give yourself is to know uh, what these Daniel Code numbers are. Okay, let's move on. I want to talk to you um, also about commodities today. Um, <coughs> this is the um, Commodity Index. This is the Goldman Sachs Commodity Index. Uh, the dashed uh, black line on here um, is the old 2009 low where commodities were uh, very hard hit. Uh, in fact, they've taken that low out. Uh, they took it out in uh, November 2015, um, and it's gone even lower um, in uh, March. Uh, well, earlier than March, that's probably February, I suspect, uh, and rallying, and it's on its way back. It's right back to that number now. Uh, but commodities generally are pretty depressed across the board. Um, that doesn't mean um, that they're no good for us. Have a look at this. Uh, this is the Success Program. The Success is a new, newish program. Um, when I say newish, I just looked at my uh, book where I uh, write down all the orders, um, and uh, uh, we're very. I'm very close to having uh, used up. This is a 400-page book. Most of it's gone. Uh, we actually we actually ran this for free. <coughs> for everyone for seven months um, and uh, see if you liked it but uh, I, I've enjoyed it uh, what we're trying to do here is this is a, a particular type of program that's designed to keep you in markets for the long trade when they're trending so when you get a trending market you've got to hang on to it it's just as important to get out of a choppy market as it is to hang on to a trending market so uh, this is oil which has been extraordinary hasn't it now those of you who have been reading about oil going negative, not us. 
uh, we trade CL, which is the contract for light sweet crude. The contract that went negative is WTI, West Texas Intermediate. Um, and that had very little to do with the uh, actual price of <coughs> oil um, and a great deal to do with the stupidity of uh, folks who are very, very, very heavily invested in an oil ETF. Uh, but amazingly, you would say amazingly, I mean, that market pretty well mirrored this. Have a look. Um, it's been down. It's been downhill since there. But they still kept on to their, held their long positions. <coughs> and what happened is that uh, there was an ETF, uh, exchange traded fund, uh, in uh, oil. Uh, it was called oil. That was the name of the ETF, I think, or OIL. Um, and it had uh, embedded in it um, futures contracts. But the people who create ETFs do it for a particular purpose. People are frightened of futures for some reason. I don't understand. Uh, but uh, the theory is that people, everyone uh, seems to be fairly <coughs> comfortable with uh, stocks. So an ETF is really an attempt to turn uh, a derivative uh, market into a stock market that looks like a stock. So that's what ETFs do, basically. Um, and, and it appeals to an awful lot of people. I know people who trade ETFs. I, I scratch my head, but um, uh, why you trade an ETF when there's a futures contract is totally beyond me, but they do. Um, and um, they, uh, of course, totally and utterly ignorant of what a futures contract is, in, and in particular, ignorant of the fact that uh, futures contracts have a rollover. Uh, when uh, when the uh, uh, volume goes into the next month and it stops being the front month, there's a rollover. <coughs> a few days after that is settlement. And some of these markets still require physical settlement, one of which is oil. The oil futures markets have physical settlements. So really what was happening with that WTI, there were a bunch of people, hundreds of millions of dollars long, um, uh, as the market was plummeting. Um, and uh, came settlement. Uh, these are just uh, traders. They got no intention of taking a delivery. They weren't even aware that they were trading a futures contract. It was embedded in the ETF and they were liable for delivery. And, and all of a sudden, they were just... Um, um, a whole lot of uh, uh, settlement calls being made, and uh, uh, they couldn't uh, couldn't take delivery of it. So uh, they'll give delivery, uh, but there was a shortage of storage as well. They finished up; uh, they went negative thirty seven, thirty eight dollars a contract, uh, which uh, meant you you actually paid someone uh, to store this stuff for you at a pretty high rate. <laughs> Stupid stuff, wasn't it? Uh, but anyway. Uh, we were happily uh, trading uh, oil in the uh, success uh, program here. It made uh, this is the uh, June contract. We've got I'm using two different contracts here because uh, we had quite a dramatic rollover that obscured quite a bit. Uh, so we made uh, 3,800 in that little run up and 12,200 uh, in the uh, run down. Uh, so there was the first uh, 16, 15 and a half, 16,000 of that. Here's the rally up. We got long above this little inside bar here, uh, and we actually got short below this next inside bar here, <coughs> uh, and then long there. We, we made a few dollars. Uh, then in this first run up, we made uh, $4,300. Uh, we lost $800 on the outside bar, 835 actually, uh, and then we got long again actually above this high. It's a little bit better than what I've shown you here, uh, another $50 or $100, but look at this thing. It's twelve and a half thousand dollars up to here. Um, in fact, it's fourteen thousand three hundred. Um, use the figures there. There's uh, sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars plus what we made on the rundown. I mean, you know, this is a market that, that's made us thirty-five, forty thousand dollars per one contract, uh, and that's in the success program. So if you haven't woken up to that yet, folks, uh, the ability it has to make money, go and have a free trial. <coughs> I guess. I guess the. Um, I guess the uh, weakness of the program, if you were to ask me, is that it makes an awful lot of money when markets are trending, which is what its purpose is. And there have been some fantastically well-trending markets of late. Um, it struggles um, in consolidation. Uh, it makes a bit, it loses a bit. Uh, it makes a bit, it loses a bit. Uh, in general terms, its losses are something uh, of the order of, uh, well, it's wins at, at two to three to four times the losses. Uh, so that's how it, it makes its money. But it's there. We, we cover 11, um, 11 markets. Uh, do uh, go and have a look and 
uh, see for yourself. Uh, take a free trial. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, and talking about trending markets that make a lot of money, uh, for those of you who weren't with us uh, at the time, this is what happened in this nice crash. We got short uh, the very day uh, we had a big uh, blue line TO3 sell on that bar as well as a 6S sell. Uh, so it ran down. We made 17 odd thousand in the rundown. It rallied. We, we about break even uh, in the little rally, then sold it again. Uh, 27,000 down to the next run. Uh, then on the outside bar, we got long uh, uh, and we uh, lost um, uh, S&P. We lost 892 on that long. Uh, and then uh, we got it back uh, with the stop and reversal uh, and down into the very dramatic uh, next day. Uh, but uh, uh, essentially, we lost um, another uh, $800 -odd dollars there as well. Uh, then it started to uh, confirm its trend up. Uh, we made 3,650 3, the first little leg up, uh, 5,500 the next. And since then, it's been up and down and up and down. It's been a, uh, an up and down battle. Um, the whole purpose of trading is that you learn, uh, or I will teach you how you survive uh, those less giving days so that you're in there uh, when you get the, the big thumpers. And this is extraordinary, isn't it? Uh, 17, uh, 26, 5, 3, 8, 10, uh, 37, 40, 50, about $55,000 just in those four trades there for per one contract. For one mini contract, about 400% uh, on margin. No, about 300% on margin. Lovely stuff, isn't it? Uh, so that's what Sixless is about, um, and I wanted to show you that. Um, and uh, I also wanted to uh, draw your attention uh, to correlations in markets. This is a silver contract. Um, I told you uh, when you saw it earlier that I'd taken off uh, one of those lines, which has now been put back on. It went through it. Uh, but that's what actually set up. Uh, the silver, here we are. Uh, what's what actually set up the blue line? This was a blue line and a TO3 sell signal. What set up the blue line trade uh, was actually the bar from um, 0519. That's Tuesday's bar. Um, and uh, it closed at um, it closed at 1790 against 1788, two, uh, two, two points away. Uh, this market moved in the halves. Uh, so uh, four ticks away. Uh, that's the one that actually set up the uh, blue line trade, uh, which is valid for three days, including the day of posting. So uh, on the uh, second day, uh, Wusho, here it was, the trade was elected today, uh, $1,700 straight down. Uh, where did it stop? Pretty close to the first of the red line levels, but I think it'll go a bit further than that. The point of all this is, please remember, uh, it's been a while since we've talked about it, markets are correlated. Some mark many markets are correlated with other markets. The most obvious correlations are all of the equities, including Germany's DAX, Russell Dow, NASDAQ, S&P, and Germany's DAX. They are all correlated so highly that a trade in any one of them can be executed in any other provided the trade is elected. Gold and silver and the Huey are very highly correlated. The Huey is actually an index. It's an index of 25 unhedged gold miners. They're, those are gold miners who don't hedge their forward production. Um, and it's seen as you can't trade futures on it. You can trade options if you want to. Uh, but I use it because it's a pretty good uh, proxy uh, for gold and silver. So uh, right here we had a sell uh, on the – this is the gold chart we're on now. Uh, so we had a, we had a sell uh, for um, Monday, uh, May the 18th, I'm pretty sure. Um, and the, uh, yeah, not only do we have a sell, folks, we had a blue line sell for Monday, May the 18th, the blue line sell in gold. Um, and that, that is caused by the fact or, or came about uh, because the uh, previous day, uh, it's not on the chart now, May the, the, uh, uh, May the 15th, you had a close right at a DC blue line. That set up the blue line trade, which gave us the big dive down, the big outside bar. Where did that turn? There was the Daniel Code black line at 1775, that high, 1775. 
five tick, 0.3 was one, 0.8 the other, five tick variants, nothing, a handful. And down it went, so to, to, to today, we didn't have a signal in gold, but we did have um, a, a signal in Huey, uh, and we also had a cell in silver. So because gold and silver and, so, and Huey are also highly correlated, a signal in any one can be executed in any other. So if you chose to execute the silver or the Huey signal in gold, it was an easy $2,200 for you. Um, and there you are. Uh, so uh, that's what's uh, been happening, folks. Um, uh, what's the uh, ongoing issue? What's the pressing issue? Well, uh, the pressing issue is how are equity markets going to resolve um, in fact, commodity markets also, how are they going to resolve what damage has been done uh, by COVID-19? And we don't, we don't know the answer to that yet. Uh, and that's why it is uh, so fascinating uh, to see what those markets are going to do. Uh, so uh, folks, uh, I have, hope I have starting to convince you, if you're not already uh, uh, trading, you should. Uh, you can start trading from the Daniel Code website. There's a ton of material there to get you started. If you ever decide you want to be a super trader, join the elite. Uh, let me know, jneedham at thedanielcode.com. jneedham at thedanielcode.com. Shoot me an email. Uh, I'll be happy to call you. Let me know uh, where you live and a phone number so I don't uh, inadvertently call you in the middle of the night. Um, I will be uh, happy to call you and talk about your trading um, and uh, set out how you can become um, a super trader. Uh, and uh, do let me know. Uh, I'll send you some material uh, you can look through for a while, and then uh, I'll give you a call. Uh, we'll have a chat about your trading if you decide to go down that route. Uh, here's our new Learn to Trade uh, banner, uh, which my son has kindly made me. Just a second, please. Sorry, that's what happens when you're working from home and uh, the switchboard operator um, is not here because she doesn't actually come to the house. So the switchboard operator is Mrs. Needham, who wasn't there quickly enough. Uh, do forgive me. Uh, so this is a new Learn to Trade uh, banner my son has made. Uh, it seems to me while uh, things have slowed down a bit with uh, COVID, uh, take the opportunity. Uh, Fiona, uh, she's left. No, uh, Fiona's left. Jeff, uh, good. Okay. Uh, they enjoyed all of that. So did Murph. So did everyone. Uh, any charts on the Aussie spy? Uh, yes. Um, <coughs> I can get something for you for uh, next week or shoot me an email. I can send you them, uh, Peter, if you like. Uh, so this is the banner my son uh, made up. Um, and this is my version of it. The business of trading futures and Forex is not to be right. The business of trading is to make money. So if that interests you and you want to make some money, uh, come and uh, uh, let me know. Uh, Akshay, uh, John, is it possible to see the NASDAQ and S&P standard deviations? Uh, certainly can. Uh, not right now because we're running out of time. Uh, Akshay, but uh, shoot me an email, mate, and I will uh, send them. I will email them to you. Uh, great. Uh, so that's it. Um, okay, that's us for the time being, folks. Uh, free trials if you haven't already. Uh, please go to the Daniel Code, uh, www.thedanielcode.com. Hello, Jay down in Coffs Harbour. Good to hear from you, mate. Uh, go to the Daniel Code website, hit the register button, uh, and uh, uh, that will enable your free trial uh, for 14 days. Uh, contact Terry, support at thedanielcode.com uh, for any issues at all. Um, and uh, this is our disclaimer, folks. Uh, I ask you to be serious about the risk involved in futures and forex trading. It is very, very easy to lose your money and to lose it very, very quickly if you don't know what you're doing. I do uh, implore you, learn to trade and prove to yourself that you know how to trade before you risk real money. Uh, better still, contact me and we'll organize a Daniel Code tutorial for you, which will not only teach you how to trade futures and forex, but everything else as well. Uh, Chun has been using it lately to trade Bitcoin and doing very well. So it controls all markets in all time frames. 
<coughs> and that's um, that's it for the day, folks. Uh, we've gone a little bit over time. Um, I do thank you for being with us, um, and uh, I look forward to talking to you at our next uh, webinar. In the meantime, uh, shoot me an email about anything you would like me to discuss uh, or anything you would like me to show you. All uh, all uh, details of Forex and Futures are always answered. Keith, good to have you with us, my friend, um, and thanks for being here today. All the best, folks. Bye-bye.